So you might have this issue that I also have, which is called the hard drive accumulation complex. But not to worry, today I'll be talking about a possible solution. I have with me this storage solution that might be the answer to your home office studio or to your small studio and all of that data management for all the videos and photos that you take. I'll be talking about this hard drive solution, which is a RAID hard drive, and this is the Glyph Black Box Pro. We'll find out how good this is and whether this will suit your workflow. I'll also be talking about my workflow moving forward now that I have this drive, and that might be something that would suit your own workflow or your own needs as well. Although this is not a sponsored video, Glyph did send me this hard drive a few weeks ago for me to try out. And I do have to say that I've been quite happy with it as a one storage solution for all of the content that I have, all my videos and photos. And just to give you some context, I've been shooting videos since 2013. Uh, started with a bunch of weddings and then YouTube and corporate videos, client work and a bunch of stuff. So. Take this with a grain of salt, if you will, but also Glyph does not get to see this video before you do, and all the thoughts in this video are completely my own. So the first major thing about this drive is that it's not just your regular hard drive, like one of these, is that this is a RAID storage solution. And if you're new to this stuff, I'll be explaining about that, so don't you worry. So RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks and how that data is stored and managed across multiple hard drives in different places. So this Black Box Pro by Glyph has a few RAID options. It has RAID 0, so this splits data across two or more drives simultaneously, making read and write speeds a lot faster. It uses 100% of the storage capacity, so this Black Box RAID Solution has two hard drives, one at the top and one at the bottom. This combined has 48 terabytes of storage, so 24 and 24. With Array Zero, you get to use all of that 48 terabyte storage solution, and you'll be able to access all of these data at a very fast speed. However, there is a con is that there is no redundancy and there is no backup. So if one drive were to fail, you lost all of that. The next RAID option that this hard drive has is RAID 1, which is mirroring. This is the one that I'll be using and I'll tell you why. So the data is mirrored or copied across both hard drives. So in case one fails, you still have the other one. So you can just replace that failed one and replace it with a new hard drive that will be your new archive or copy. So this is the benefit of that. The con is that because you're mirroring the hard drives, you lose half of that storage space. For peace of mind, I will be going with this solution. Another thing too is that read and write speeds are a little slower compared to RAID 0. The next option that this drive has is JBOD, which is a really funny acronym. I'm not sure why. It's JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of disks. JBOD. This treats each drive as an individual disk. So each drive works separately without any RAID configuration, just as if you were to have different external hard drives. You're able to access the full storage capacity and you're able to swap drives as you wish or as they get filled up. The con is that there is no speed benefit and there is no redundancy benefit of using this. The last option that this drive allows is called SPAN or SPAN. And in other words, this is one large drive. So this combines all of the drives available into one huge large hard drive, but without the speed benefits of RAID 0. So if one hard drive fills up, the data spills over onto the next one. To put it simply, it makes multiple drives appear as one whole single volume. You're able to use 100% of all that storage capacity available, but some of the cons are, if one drive fails, you may lose all of your data. There's no speed benefits and there's no redundancy. So right off the box, this comes pre-configured in RAID 0. The cool thing about it is that I can easily reconfigure it to any of these four RAID configurations without tedious software management. So all I have to do is just arrange the little switches at the back to the appropriate configuration and press the reset button. One thing you have to keep in mind though, once you have a RAID configuration and you decide to switch midway, if you switch, make sure you back up all of that data first because as soon as you switch RAID configurations, the hard drive is going to be formatted. So in the box, of course you have the encasing with two hard drives, 
you have a Thunderbolt 3 cable, you have the silicon rugged removable cover and an external power supply. So this hard drive is not too big, even though there's 48 terabytes of storage here, which I like. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but it does not take too much space on your desk, home studio, or in your small studio space. There is an optional card reader you can get, but I do not have that on this version. It has an aluminum shell that acts as a heatsink to control temperature and prevent overheating. There is also an internal fan, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one display port, and it's formatted right out of the box for Mac, but you can easily reformat it for Windows. And the cool thing is that it has 7200 RPM. It has enterprise class hard drive with speeds up to 550 megabytes per second. And that's not going to be fast enough or as fast to your SSD hard drives like this one, but still very fast compared to other hard drive disk or external hard drive options available out there. And the fact that you have Thunderbolt 3, it's a huge plus. So editing from it can be smooth if you're not editing a heavy project with a lot of graphics or a lot of heavy effects. If you're editing a simple YouTube video, you can easily edit it from this. I tried editing S-Log3 footage shot in 4K and this drive did not have any issues at all. So the cheapest configuration of this hard drive, it's about eight terabytes and that is about 700 US dollars. And the one here I have is 44 terabytes, which will set you back about 1600 US dollars. It is a little bit of a steeper price to pay, but honestly, I really love the ability to have a RAID configuration and not having to spend a ton of money for a huge, massive RAID sort of backup system that would take maybe like a corner in my room. I love the size of this, how it's just this little tiny thing and I'm able to get so much storage out of it and also get RAID 1. So honestly, for Thunderbolt 3, for something so small and compact, it is definitely worth the price. Their warranty is actually very comprehensive as well. They have what they call the 3 2, 1 warranty. They have three years of hardware coverage. They have two years of data recovery and one year of advanced replacement. So super cool to have that peace of mind. So in terms of some of the cons of this drive, I find that for some people, it might still be a little bit on the pricey side, especially when you compare it to one of these. Some people might be okay without the RAID and fill them up as you go. Another minor con too is that it doesn't need to run on external power, so you need to plug into the wall, but at the same time, these drives here need to be plugged in too. So, I mean, it's a con for both of these kinds of drives. The other thing too is that this is not a NAS, this is not a network attached storage, so you do not have connectivity over the internet, over the cloud, so it is just completely local storage. But again, a NAS solution would require a more complex setup and more money. And for me, I don't really need that, so I'm comfortable with a local rate solution. So in terms of my workflow right now, all of my videos have been added to this hard drive right now, which is great because sometimes I'm making a video and I want to reference a clip or B-roll from a video that I shot maybe in 2020, 2021, and then I have to go seek it and find it from one of these hard drives here. But now everything will be all in this one big drive so I can easily go and access those files. I'll be editing most of my videos still on this SSD. So my current projects within two months are all going to be residing here as working projects. And every week or every two weeks, I'll back them up into this RAID. After those projects are completed, they'll be shifted to this RAID. So this RAID is going to be the main storage for everything. This is going to be for working projects, especially when I'm on the go and working outside. One more thing, I do still plan to keep some of these hard drives as the backup of the backup. So backups of this hard drive in case those two drives happen to fail at the same time, which is very, very unlikely, but always back up your files, especially if you think you'll be needing them in the future. So that will be my workflow moving forward. And let me know if that would suit your needs or if you have a different type of workflow, let me know in the comments below. So should you get this drive? I think if you are serious about your data and you would like that RAID solution, especially with RAID 1 with that automatic backup, I think this is a no brainer. 
that yes, you're going to be spending a little bit more money compared to external hard drives, but you'll be getting a solid rate solution for all of your storage needs. If you are just interested in max capacity and don't care about the rate configuration, then you probably don't need it. You probably can just stick with your external hard drives and then just get them one by one. So that's it for this video. And if you're still watching, here are a couple more videos you could watch next and I'll see you there.